Hi guys, happy Sunday. I'm Paul, this is Anna, and this is the final Sunday well in the wilderness. We're coming to the end of Acts, and uh, it's been really good reading the Gospel of Luke and, and Acts during the first part of the lockdown. Uh, so thank you for joining us, and uh, it's, uh, it's great to be able to uh, reflect tonight on a question which is relevant to all of us, uh, the question is, what is your story of how God has changed your life? What is your story of how God has changed your life? We're going to read a little bit about uh, Saul's story in a moment and how he uses his story from before he met Jesus to then show the difference that God has made in his life after meeting Jesus. Um, some of you may know that my story is fairly simple uh, because I never went to church as a kid, only when I got dragged along uh, with the Cubs and the Scouts. I wasn't at all interested in church. Church was a cold, irrelevant building in the middle of the village, which I assumed was full of irrelevant, boring people who worshipped an irrelevant, boring God. Uh, and it took me going to America uh, to see that church could be relevant, the people inside could be relevant, and God could definitely be very relevant. Uh, and so it's, it's quite clear for me to, to then use the first part of my story when I begin to talk to other people about church, because I can understand how church may not seem that interesting, might not seem that fun, and might not seem like the sort of place you would want to go and spend any time during the week. Um, so that's the kind of first part of my story. Uh, maybe I'll share the second part after Anna reads for us. So it's going to be Acts chapter 26. We're continuing the journey of Paul, who's uh, been taken captive, thrown into prison, and now he gets to speak to some pretty important people about how his story was changed by God. So as Anna reads, maybe reflect on what is your story of how God has changed your life? Over to Anna. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. So Paul motioned with his hand and began his defence. King Agrippa, I consider myself fortunate to stand before you today as I make my defence against all the accusations of the Jews and especially so because you are well acquainted with all the Jewish customs and controversies. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. The Jewish people all know the way I have lived ever since I was a child, from the beginning of my life in my own country and also in Jerusalem. They have known me for a long time and can testify, if they are willing, that I conform to the strictest sect of our religion, living as a Pharisee. And now it is because of my hope in what God has promised our ancestors that I am on trial today. This is the promise our twelve tribes are hoping to see fulfilled as they earnestly uh, serve God and day and night. King Agrippa, it is because of this hope that the Jews are accusing me. Why should any of you consider it incredible that God raises the dead? I too was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus of Nazareth, and that it, it and that it, and that is just what I did in Jerusalem, on the authority of the chief priests. I put many of the Lord's people in prison. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Many a time I went from one synagogue to another to have them punished, and I tried to force them to blaspheme. I was so obsessed with persecuting them that I even hunted them down in foreign cities. On one of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authorities and commissions of the chief priests. About noon, King Agrippa, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Then I asked, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God 
so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So then, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven, first to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and then to the Gentiles. I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. That is why some Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me. But God has helped me to this very day, so I stand here and testify to small and great alike. I am saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said would happen, that the Messiah would suffer and, as the first to rise from the dead, would bring the message of light to his own people and to the Gentiles. At this point, Festus interrupted Paul's defence. You're out of your mind, Paul, he shouted. Your great learning is driving you insane. I'm not insane, insane, most excellent, in Festus, Paul replied. What I'm saying is true and reasonable. The king is familiar with these things and I can speak freely to him. I'm convinced that none of this has escaped his notice because it, because it was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? Paul replied, Short time or long, I pray to God that not only you but all who are listening to me today may become what I am, except for these chains. The king rose, and with him the governor and Bernice and those sitting with them. After they left the room, they began saying to one another, This man is not doing anything that deserves death or imprisonment. Agrippa said to Festus, This man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. Thank you, Anna. Isn't this amazing how uh, Saul ends up speaking to a king about the change that God has made in his life? And, And Paul's story is a little bit like this. He's going this way, he's taking out Christians, he's sending them to prison, he's having them persecuted. And he does a complete 180 degree turn and goes the exact opposite way and ends up defending the Christian faith. And I think I felt exactly the same way. I was going this way, thinking that church was completely irrelevant and boring. And God helped me do a complete 180 to the point that now I'm in a position where I want to encourage other people to see how relevant church is. So if that means that church is actually in a youth cafe in Knoll instead of a big um, fairly intimidating building then I think that's what we need to do we need to transform Penny's youth cafe into church uh, for people here whatever we can do to make church and God more relevant is is so important for those outside church and and I think if we can use part of our story to tell people well look I was going this way I didn't really believe in this Uh, God, I didn't really believe in Jesus, but actually he's helped me do a 180 degree turn and go the exact opposite way, then that speaks powerfully into people's lives, just as Paul was able to do into King Agrippa's life. And if you are watching this uh, Instagram feed and you haven't yet seen uh, the youth service on YouTube, we really encourage you uh, to tune in. It's uh, on KPC Youth at YouTube, 6.30 every Sunday, but obviously you can watch it now. And uh, we are rediscovering church uh, this month and next month. So all of what we're talking about in terms of making church more relevant uh, to people outside the church is what we're going to be reflecting on. So hope you can join us again tomorrow at eight o'clock for the Instagram, Well in the Wilderness. And also do check out on YouTube the uh, youth service if you've got a chance to. Uh, Thanks for tuning in and have a blessed evening ahead. God bless you. God bless you. Bye. Bye.